Today we are on an adventure here in Winston-Salem. We're going to be on the lookout for some roadside treasures, including this teapot. Dawn, are you ready? Ready. Let's, Let's do, do it. this. That is probably the biggest coffee pot I have ever seen. I think I called it a teapot mm -hmm. during the entrance, but it's actually a coffee pot. The Mickey coffee pot was built in 1858 by brother Samuel and Julius Mickey, Moravian descendants of the founders of Salem. This landmark originally stood in front of their tin shop at the corner of South Main and Bellow Streets in Salem. Just another little roadside attraction. attraction, something to pull off the road, makes you explore. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just right between Old Town and New Town here. So there's downtown Winston-Salem, and we're going to head into Old Town. Oh, it's a beautiful morning here. There's that teapot. I, I can't get over the teapot. And... It feels like we're in Salem, Massachusetts, because these buildings, or these old homes, looks like something you would see in, in Salem, Massachusetts. And of course, they're sharing a name there, Salem, and this is Old Salem, and it, it looks like a, a magnificent town, beautiful homes. Let's take a look at some of these. Smith Blacksmith Shop sat here in 1768. Of course, it's long gone, but it's great to check out the history and take a look at this crazy house here. There's a little placard over here. I'm wondering who lived here. This was the site of Salem Concert Hall, which were held the first courts. So this was a concert hall or it, maybe it was at one time and you can see the chandelier in wow it's a it's a crazy house crazy crazy house I bet that's at least 10 rooms or more oh that's it's a mansion I love the little fountain and a lot of these are private residents, but you can look through the great big giant windows. You can see all of like the Queen Anne furniture, the wean back chairs it is decorated to the period. And yeah, take a look at the, the beams that are in between the brickwork. And this is called the fifth house, which was built in 1768. And then it was altered in 1805 and you can see like they have the dowel rods and take a look there and that's where the milkman will deliver the milk daily to you you ever heard that old saying Don that you must be the milkman's daughter yeah. or something you get it it's kind of <laughs> yeah they even have like log gutters yeah very nice backyards i love that that rock work uh, i think we found the the pharmacy so this is cape fear bank from 1847 I love how they have these little these little things here to keep the shutters open. They're they're real working shutters. These days it's mostly just plastic fake shutters and oh it just the architecture in here is crazy. I love the the looks of everything. 
So I noticed there's a lot of school field trips going on. A lot of kids roaming the streets. I got a hat shop over there, 1825. I think this is where you'll get a new set of trousers, Don. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is where you get your pants. And there's probably a guy over there who does your shirts, and there's a guy who does boots, and there's a guy over there that does hats. And by the time you go from one end of the street to the other, you get a full, you know, full dress, right? Yeah, it's like an old blacksmith shop or something. There are a lot of field trips here, so you'll hear a lot of kids in the background. <laughs> uh, which It's good to see kids in school because yeah. a lot of times we question living in Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. Do kids go to school anymore? Because it always seems like there's there's a, kids everywhere, even in the middle of the week, during a school week. So it's good to see you know that. Now, this was the community store in 1775. I'm assuming this is the House of Arms. There's a great big musket hanging from the front of the building. And uh, the Christoph Vogger House built in 1797 huh and you can tell that all these structures are are very old I love the the brickwork the doors the windows you know it's got that lead glass so it kind of gives a wavy look when you and it seems like town is getting older as we go this way a lot of these 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 buildings were built when you know the American Revolution happened. So, um, yeah, we're here. That's seventeen ninety seven, and here's a little wooden building here. And this was a, a shoemaker built in eighteen twenty seven. Of course, made out of wood. Oh, and there's a little <laughs> little pair of shoes in there. The shoe shop. Yeah. You know, back in the old back in the old days, you had to go to different shops for different things. You know, trousers, jackets, and each each house had a. This is alteration, so you can get your your clothing altered. Eighteen nineteen to eighteen twenty seven. So you see that there, they're they're old street lights. Yeah, they're little oil canisters, and they would, and that's how they would light the streets. Antique or historic street lights. <laughs> Some of the most amazing barns I have ever seen. So I'm assuming that this bridge here was built in 1998. It's not an old one, but it was built the way they were back in the day. And the craftsmanship is is amazing. It's a lot of fun to walk through now, right over the road here. Of course, they have the old Salem Visitor Center. And Salem's most famous guest was President George Washington. He visited here in 1791. We have our passes to get into some of the historic structures. And uh, it was $30 a person, about $62 or something out the door. And I got another pin for the map. And here's the map of the town. And we're starting right here. And we're gonna work our way down Main Street and all these brown buildings are the ones that we have access to with our day pass and that's the the giant coffee pot so 
we technically had walked through town already and now we're going to go back and take a look on the inside of some of these buildings the frank l horton museum center oh my goodness look at the detail in some of this this furniture some of these you know like dresser drawers and and a lot of these pieces are made all through the south in fact this chair was made in in tennessee and uh, that's what this building's all about. It's about a lot of the southern, you know, woodwork. Things that are made in the south. And boy, the they know how to make fine furniture. And mahogany and, and cherry. I like this la lady's closet here. Built in 1721. Through 1778. And that there was made in Charleston, South Carolina. 1765. Yeah, these chest of drawers was built in Kentucky, Madison County, Kentucky. In uh, 1795 through 1800. Uh, southern glazed pots. And there is a... A face jug up there. This cooler here is made in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1804 through 1887. So yeah, the, so the lion figure is from um, Virginia. Wow, this is interesting. You wouldn't think it would be, but going around and seeing all of this uh, pottery and, and furniture and everything made here in the South. So this stoneware is made from 1789 to 1876. And this is all made here in Kentucky or made all in Kentucky. And this face jug here is from 1860. Yeah, early face jugs all found in South Carolina around 1850s. Yeah, a lot of, learn a lot about pottery in the South, mm -hmm. the history. William Craven water cooler Another Tennessee made from 1847 in Henderson County. Salt glaze stoneware. And look at the uh, the description on it. 1847, July the 10th of 1847. North Carolina, Tennessee, South Carolina, pretty much anywhere in the South, they're known for their furniture and this is a museum dedicated to that, and they had a lot of great things in there. So the Moravians that were here in old Salem were craftsmen and women. And now we're gonna take a look at all the things that were made here in old Salem. A lot of Southern influence and all this, all this art. They made almost everything here, uh, baskets, little pouches, purses. They made furniture. In fact, I know them for making their furniture. Uh, hat boxes, even muskets and uh, silversmiths. Yep. A little bit of everything. Yeah, here's some of their silver. Here's some of the silver work that they've done here. Yeah, the Moravians were impressive builders. My favorite piece are are these clocks over here. Oh. Well, 
So now that we learned more about the Moravians, we are gonna head into Old Salem. We're gonna check out all these old buildings that date back to the early 1700s, mid 1700s. An old log cabin church. Yeah, so we're gonna head inside the Timothy Volger Gun Shop, 1831. And there's a, a musket. <laughs> it is open. Show our ticket. Yeah, so this is where they did all the gunsmithing. They're still making firearms in there today. Um, very interesting. It was, it was great to see the process of it. But they didn't want us filming the process. A 26 state flag. That is where a lot of the woodwork was made and you can find it throughout the town. Uh, they were joiners. They would come in and do like, you know, all the intricate woodwork. Pretty cool. They can make pretty much everything in there. And he said he could fix anything in there. We learned about the industrial age, I guess you would consider it. And uh, a lot of history, talked a little bit about slavery. And they wouldn't let us film in there because I think it's because of the sensitive subjects and stuff like that. But uh, I learned a lot. And uh, what did you think, Don? It was interesting. There's a silversmith in there. Uh, they talked about uh, the, the Vogel family and the prominence that they had in the area. We learned more about the Moravians. And uh, it's really good. But yeah, not all of these places will allow you to film in there. Uh, I think it's because of the actors in general. So I can film around the actors, but not as much of the actors. So you might be pumping forever and nothing might happen. There it goes. It's a coming. Go, Don, go. Go, Don, go. <laughs> On the roof of someone's house. <laughs> <laughs> pump, Don, pump. Well, it I don't works. Know whose house this is, but <laughs> it's coming. And that's about as good as it's gonna get for me. Yeah, that, I wouldn't. <laughs> you gotta work out, right? Yeah. Even smells old. Or the horses, all right, you know? <laughs> the horses. So this here is a tailor shop. And this is where they would have learned how to make clothes and pretty cool. So yeah, that was the single boys house. That's where they would, pretty much a trade school. Um, pretty interesting. Yeah, so we're gonna head into the bakery. Mmm, cookies. Yeah, so this is pretty much a, a gift shop. There's a bakery downstairs. And look at the old floors, they creak when you, when you walk on them. And they have some sugar cake, and there's the oven right there. It's where they would make their bread. And there's a there's the coffee pot. So that's the bakery. And when you get three or four field trips in there, it gets wild, wild. But they do have some baked goods in there, and it smelt wonderful. But we already have baked goods from the last stop that we did in the car. Uh, we can't just keep picking up baked goods wherever we go. We could do that. I don't know about we that. We could. Uh, it's a great, great area. It kind of reminds me of like Greenfield Village back in where I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Or uh, like Williamsburg. I love this photo here. You got the old Salem, the old buildings. 
then you have a skyscraper from the new Salem, the new Winston Salem. Yeah, so this is the tavern, and this is one of the oldest buildings in town. And a lot of folks stayed here. Of course, you can see there a little bit of dinner out there, and maybe some folks were planning their trip back home. These floors, George Washington himself would have walked on. And he stayed here in this, this very room. Just imagine George Washington walked on these floors, the first president of the United States. Yeah, so George Washington stayed in this very room. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is a room for presidents. So that was probably the most amazing part of this whole tour was the tavern and learning that George Washington himself stayed there. He walked through those grounds and, and on those boards and the, the flooring is still there. So you could say that George Washington walked through there. The Moravians were interesting folks and they still exist today. And uh, it's just a very interesting time here in America, the craftsmanship, uh, the history, the buildings. This town is very, very nicely restored and, and put together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to a couple other little landmarks around town and take a look at some roadside things here. Uh, but it's an amazing town and it's worth a day here. We're just outside Winston. Salem and there's a great big shell gasoline shell station you get it a shell station this is really neat. it is shaped as a shell as a shell so this was built in 1930 and there used to be eight of these all around Winston Salem but this is the only one remaining of its type and it was a marketing campaign because shell oil was a new company then. There is no other place on the planet you can go into a great big shell <laughs> to pay for your shell gasoline. I'm assuming that the island used to be here, or right rough, roughly where those two pumps are at. And you know the reason why these are glassed on? Because back in the day, a lot of folks thought they were, were being scammed on how much gas that was going into their car. So what they would do is they would fill the gasoline up to a certain point, right? Yeah. And they'd say, okay, you have, you know, four gallons, five gallons, six gallons. And then once it was filled up, they would then, it would just drain it into your car. So you knew that you were getting, you know, if, if you pay for five gallons, you would get five gallons of gas. And there is a guy in there. He scared Don when Don looked in there. <laughs> but it's all like been redone and all preserved. You can see the you can see the bathroom off to the right or the left there. That would have been the bathroom. Yeah, you can fill up your water for your radiator and and uh it was made out of kind of like a stucco. Oh, look at that. I love the colors great big huge clam shell <laughs> or a shell shell very very nice very unique you know kind of reminds me of like the wigwams you know in Kentucky and California and Arizona it kind of gives me that same feel you know this is Americana right at its best and this is where they would have fixed cars, would have fixed them outside. They wouldn't have been in, wouldn't have been in an enclosed garage. But this is where they would, the mechanic would, would look at your vehicle. Finally, it's great to see it in real life and not in a magazine or a book about roadside America. And there's a great big huge bike on that building. It's not the world's largest as far as I know, but... It's, it's a bike fit for a giant. 
Maybe Willow could ride that. I think Will, Willow could probably ride that. Behind us is the world's largest chest of drawers. Look at that. There's some socks hanging out of the top. It looks fun. So now we're in High Point, North Carolina, and this is the furniture capital of the world, and it's home to the world's largest chest of drawers. It's got that, that scalloping at the top. It's got some socks hanging out of it. And you can't miss it. It's this, like 30 foot tall. It's it's crazy. It's uh, very unique just to drive down the road and Don goes, look, there's some socks hanging out of out of drawers. out of some drawers, right? And uh yeah. You know, my mom has got a chest like that with the same design on the top at home. That is really cool. And a lot of your furniture is made in this area. There's a lot of furniture. Thomasville is not too far from here. And you know Thomasville furniture? Yeah, it's all made in the area, or was. A lot of it now is made overseas. Uh, not as much made here in the south anymore. Just down the street from the big chest of drawers is John Coltrane. He's a world-renowned jazz musician, saxophonist. He's actually got a, a sax, and he could really tear up those pipes. A really good bronze statue. He's got a saxophone. Yeah, And a little little placard over here. He was a High Point resident, world-renowned jazz artist. He could play the piano, the sax. Yeah, here's some of his, his hits. You got Blue Train, Giant Steps, Love Supreme. And uh, he was real popular for what? He was born 1926 and looks like in right around the 40s. But... And they have a nice little historic marker over here. John Coltrane, 1926 through 1967. And we are here in downtown High Point. And they got a crazy big convention center. And they must be having a furniture convention. Because earlier we saw all, like, all people moving couches down the street and into the buildings and stuff. And... This is the furniture capital of the world. It's kind of a small town, but yet it's, you know, it's got a, like a big city atmosphere. Yeah, Blue Train. Blue Train, released in 1957. Considered by many to be Coltrane's first true solo album, it is the first he recorded featuring musicians and songs entirely of his choosing. The title track is a long, rhythmically variegated blues with a brooding minor theme that gradually shifts to major during Coltrane's first chorus. So now we're here in Thomasville, North Carolina, and that is the world's largest chair. Now we hear that term wherever we go, the world's largest chair. Everybody claims to have one. Uh, I will say that that's not the world's largest chair because I've seen chairs bigger. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice chair. But it's a very nice, I would consider it the world's nicest chair. Yeah. It's the most decorative. Of course, we are in the home of the chair. And you might know Thomasville by its furniture. You know, Thomasville furniture. And that's what they do here. They do furniture, especially chairs. We'll go check that out. And, uh, yeah, it's really cool. And you know what? The tulips are popping everywhere. The fragrance is just out of this world it with is. the tulips. They smell amazing. And this is a nice little town. Very nice little town. We're going to take a look around. So they call it the Big Chair. That's its official name. And uh, it's it's amazing chair. Uh, it's gosh be at least 30, 30 foot tall. If not higher. And it sits on this great big huge marble base. Of course, the beautiful tulips on each side are absolutely stunning. So they call it the chair 
of Thomasville and it was erected in 1950 so maybe at the time this was the world's largest chair it might have only been the, it might have been the only chair of, of its type it's quite old and it's considered a a local historic landmark by the council Goes an Amtrak. <laughs> this is John Warwick Thomas, the founder of Thomasville in 1852. And I got a really nice old caboose here and a southern and a great train station. Yeah. Thomasville, North Carolina. Yeah, home of the chair. They have a lot of murals in town. Of course, a train station. A little steam engine coming through. and I wonder if that's their hotel. Home of the world's largest chair. On the mirror over here, it gives you stats of the chair. So the chair is 13 feet high, six inches. The seat is six feet by five feet, six inches. Its leather seat is hide from a Swiss steer and it was tanned up in Grand Haven, Michigan. Folks, that's gonna do it for our little journey today. We started off in Winston, Salem. We had learned a lot of things, didn't we? Yeah. Saw a great big coffee pot then we got to see a great big chest of drawers. That was fun. That was fun. And we capped it off with the chair. A great big chair here in Thomastown. I highly recommend doing Old Salem. That was a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Uh, we walked the grounds that George Washington had once. Um, it was just a great day learning yeah. history here in in central North Carolina. And North Carolina is an amazing state. There is so much to do. You have mountains on the west end. You got beaches on the on the east end. And you got a lot of amazing in the middle. But folks, that's gonna do it for today. Here in Thomasville, North Carolina. If you like this vlog, also if you haven't, please subscribe so you miss these upcoming road trip adventures. And until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.